This semester, I took on the task of researching a department store called Burdines. It was founded by William M. Burdine, who was a retired Confederate officer after the Civil War in 1896. I went on uh, with several starting points, asking many sorts of questions, unknown where the research would lead me. Eventually, I realized that this company was part and grew right along the city of Miami. Therefore, one of the research questions that came into focus was how this one company affected the lives of its customers and its employees. I discovered that Burdines was a great place to work, and William and his family were revolutionary when it came to offering their employees benefits, compensation, and even discounts at their store. Another form of a primary source utilized for this research project was the oral history interview. I located individuals who shopped at Burdines going back as early as the 1980s, individuals who shopped there their whole lives, who saw the impact that the store, uh, that this store had in what was the community of Miami. Through research and interviewing, I discovered that Burdines always in some way or another uh, way was part of the lives of ordinary people. Those um, interviewed remember that f uh, very fondly. During Christmas, uh, for example, that was the big deal for them. Uh, the company would collect money, the, the store would collect money for the poor, send gifts to children who often had none. Uh, I discovered that they cared about the community that became their home state. I mean, they were after all, call, after all called the, the Florida store, the only store in Florida ever to be referred to that way. Uh, through my interviews, I discovered that they were intimately involved in charities and organizations to help sick individuals like those with cancer. This project, uh, for me, held not only historical significance, but uh, personal significance as well. You see, as a young boy growing up, uh, as children, we fondly remember the places that our parents took us. Those days are nostalgic. And when we realize as we grow up that uh, those places that we frequented no longer exist, well, that sort of becomes a, a big disappointment. Another question that I wanted to address was the general rise and fall of the department store which through research I learned about uh, several holding companies that bought out, sometimes forced into selling uh, the department store chains, which they cared little about. They only cared about making money, and when they did not perform or to save money on advertising or floor space in the same mall, they would merge department stores, which is what happened to Burdines. Although Burdines was making well over $1 billion in sales and was Florida's top store, but that's exactly what happened in 2005 when the Macy's brand became Burdines as well as the other regional stores, as these uh, regional stores that shared so much with the culture of their states. Well, these stores were, uh, they were um, faded out, phased out. As a result, I don't think I will ever visit the Macy's anymore, at least not an international mall or Dayland Mall here in Miami, because those stores, along with another 50 department stores throughout the free state of Florida, were Burdines. I mean, you can still see the columns, that the palm tree columns that the store had. But they were all converted to Macy's. This project holds significance, uh, historical value for the history of Florida, in particular the history of Miami, because this store grew and matured with the tiny little uh, uh, fishing village that um, was Miami, and it became, um, as it later then became throughout the 20th century, a huge metropolis. And like I said, everyone that I interview fondly remembers Burdines, and when they talk about it, you can see a gleam in their eye. So I know it, uh, it's, it, I helped. Uh, it's very it had very important historical significance to the lives of ordinary people. Me as a small boy, my father would take me to the mall. I would ride the carousel with, and uh, all while my grandmother would shop at Burdines. We Cubans here called it Burdines, and that's and you know all the Cubans here in Florida after they started to arrive as political refugees from the Castro communist dictatorship in Cuba, um, we were amazed at the variety and the amount of goods that Burdines sold. Everyone who lived in Florida up until 2005 remembers Burdines. Most people, however, don't know what happened to it. That's something that I too realized with my research. I located uh, about 11 books from the library, 25 primary sources that included newspaper articles, uh, 19 secondary uh, academic journal articles from JSTOR and uh, the Jerry Falwell Library and a dissertation about mass retail in Canada. I thought it was proper since the holding company that would acquire both Macy's and Burdines with a Canadian-based corporation.
It was from Canada. How could a Canadian company making all the decisions about the future of Burdines know anything about about Burdines? Well, they didn't. They didn't know the cultural, the historical, the community that Burdines inhabited and how they were part of that community. I had to read as part of my research methodology as much as I possibly could, put the pieces together, interview people, and a picture of that department store slowly emerged. I came to the conclusion that it was in fact a special place to shop. And so my summation to conclude. I discovered that I had the same feelings about Burdines that other individuals who were lucky enough to experience it. Burdines is gone and Macy's says that is where the magic is, right? The magic of Macy's. But to people in Florida, although the memory of Burdines is fading, this research project will help preserve that memory as a historian's job will always be. This research paper will go down in the historical record that was once a great department store. Thank you.